It didn't take me long to jump back into another Infinity Comics auction. Stay tuned to see what keys I picked up next and why I continue going back to this auction site. Welcome back comic book fans, it's Rusty again from Collector Auctions and in today's episode I go back to Infinity Comics Auctions for a third try and I picked up some massive keys and some just overall great books. So today I'm going to sit down, we're going to do a comic book haul and we're going to go through the books and I'll talk a little bit about the condition and why I keep going back to Infinity Comics and picking up some of these really good keys. But before we do that, definitely hit that like button, slap the subscribe, and click on that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any of my episodes that I put out each and every week, Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. All right, guys, sit back. I'm gonna get the books ready to go, and we're gonna have a nice little comic book haul. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so I'm back. I've got the books ready to go. And one of the things I want to say about Infinity Comics auctions, these happen on hipcomic.com. And if you want to find out more about them, you can check out the website. I'll leave a link in the description below. But you can also watch some of Moneyball Comics videos as well because that's where I first learned about these auctions. So I give him a lot of credit for some of the books. And I guess... These days, I'm try I'm getting some of the books that he may be bidding on. I don't know. Well, I'll have to talk to him and find out if I've ever sniped some of his books that he's wanted on his wish list as well. We both kind of target a lot of the same books, books that have some high potential value if you can get those things cleaned and pressed and get them with some pretty high grades. And that's a very general overview about the common traits between our two channels and our two philosophies and everything. But I know for the longest time we have really been buying a lot of the same books. Although there will be times when we do very different things. But I know I got, got to thank him for getting me onto Infinity Comics auctions on this site. There are apparently other auctions that he actually did a video about that don't get as much attention as Infinity Comics. And sometimes you can go and check out those auctions on hipcomic.com as well. I'll be honest, I haven't delved in quite a, too much into the other auctions, but it's only because Infinity Comics has so many books that they put up during the week. And when I say that this is my third time back at Infinity Comics, it's the, over the course of a week, I literally have will go in at the beginning of the week and I will take a look at every comic that they are putting up for auction for the entire week. And that's every day. And I go through those books and I see things that jump out at me. Hey, there's a key. It may be a minor key, but it may be a big book. It may be a little book. But I go ahead and tag it and kind of keep an eye on it. And I take time to go through each one of those and look at the photos, blow them up as best I can, and determine if these are gonna be candidates that I will want in my collection, whether I'm going to keep them raw or get them graded and hopefully potentially push them up to a higher grade, a much higher grade that's gonna be really worth something. And again, that's a case of whether I wanna sell it or keep that in the PC as well. So. What I did was I went back, this is the third time I've gone through it back, the third basically week now, and I've gone and I've got some really good books here. So let's just get into it. Let's start with this one here. It's Hong Kong Fui number one from Charlton Comics. Now this came out in May of 1975. And this is based on the animated show that ran, and let me, I'm going to look at my notes here because I wrote this down because there was a lot of information. There was only 16 episodes that ran from 1974 and then on repeats until about 1976. Now, they did, I think, rerun some of this in the early 80s as well. But I honestly, I grew up on this. I mean, 1974, well, 1974, at this point when this aired, I was still only five years old when this aired. And that song, Hong Kong Fui, number one super guy. You know, I might have gotten that wrong, but it stuck with me to this day. And it was voiced by, Hong Kong Fui is voiced by Scatman Crothers and had that great gravelly voice. And he did the song as well. And it was just awesome. I loved it. I loved that show. 
And I can't believe it was only 16 episodes. If you guys ever get a chance to watch any of those, it was just pure fun, pure Hanna-Barbera fun back in the early 70s, early mid 70s. So definitely check that out. But this comic right here, I never, I don't think I ever saw it when I was buying comics by 19. Now this book came out in May of 1990, excuse me, May of 75. And I don't think I had any of these issues Definitely not number one, but there was a handful of others. I don't know how many issues they actually published, but this is the book that kind of jumped out at me at some of the local shows here in Maryland. There is the host of the clandestine comics shows that he has a wall up. He hosts the show, but he actually has his own booth and he has this book on the wall and it caught my eye several shows ago and it's in pretty nice shape but it was around that $85 mark and I didn't want to pay that for this for basically it's a novelty really and it's one of those that I didn't even think about the CGC grading worries about that at this point I just wanted a really nice copy but then it kicks in it kicks in CGC if you can get this thing clean to press what's it going to be worth it's always it seems like it always comes to that whether you love the book or you are just investing in a book. So I passed on the one at the show, but this one popped up and it actually didn't go for as anywhere near what that price for that book at the show was. I think the condition is probably pretty close to what I was seeing. What's neat about this, this actually does have a cover stamp as well. March 5th, 1975. This actually has a cover date of May of 1975. So that's a pretty early stamp right there and this is in really nice shape again another comic from infinity comics auctions where a little hard to see right here but again the cover the back cover is coming around on the front just a little bit past the staples so you got that very nice white edge and again this is not very much and it's hard for you to see i'm sure because i've got it in a bag and board but I continue liking those kind of books if it's not significantly coming around from the back cover because you can not have color breaking spine ticks. Now you can still have spine ticks, but at least they won't be color breaking. So this is a potential book that I will probably clean and press just to make sure it's in really good shape. It's not one of those, I couldn't find too many prices that were very recent. 7.5 as, and I forgot to tell you the condition Infinity Comics actually also not only gives you two pretty decent photos, and again, they don't, they're not as high res as a Heritage Auctions photo, but they also list what they think the condition is. They had this listed as a fine plus. For me, I think that Infinity Comics undergrades their books to a certain degree, sometimes a lot, sometimes a little. And I think this one definitely is definitely a little bit undergraded and that's one of the reasons I also picked it up but a 7.5 I pulled a few prices I could find hasn't sold since back in 2022 for $160 it's not bad 8.0 dropped down that same year though to 134 8.5 back in 2021 which I think nobody can count because of the comic boom and how everything was spiked at 124 can't find a 9.0 so this is going to be an interesting one once i clean and press it we'll see where i it stands on that and what kind of grade i think it could actually grade out to be whether or not i send this to cgc or not we'll see about that but fun book one of my favorite animated characters from the 70s. I just love that show. Hope you guys get a chance to watch Hong Kong Fooey at some point. All right. Next up, and the next couple books are books that I'm not worrying about investment. Sometimes, guys, I buy books actually because I want to read them. And I missed them when I was a kid. I had some of them around some of these storylines, but I've... Occasionally, a book will pop up, and I'm going, I remember that, but I didn't have all this, all the issues. I'd kind of like to go back and read some of those these days. So, Infinity Comics, the number one thing I'm going to say about them is, well, it's more than just one thing. But as I just mentioned before, I think they undergrade what they have are putting up there. Two, they have, these books, for the most part, have 
a lot of potential once you clean and press them. And the third thing is the prices have been very, very reasonable. Now, that's not to say that there's not been some big keys that have gone for some big money and I've let go, but I let go because like I didn't want to put that much into certain, certain books. But sometimes you can pick up some of these books that you just want for your PC, and that's what I did with the next two. It is Spectacular Spider-Man number 28 and 29. And let me see, I'm going to put them slightly side by side right there. And this right here, they're not keys, they're not first appearances, but they are the early stories of, I'm going to tell me if I'm mispronouncing, I've always, always said carry on. And it is a Miles Warren professor, Miles Warren clone. And if you remember Miles Warren, he is he was the jackal. He's the one who created the Spider-Man clone and the Gwen Stacy clone. Well, he also cloned himself. And this was sort of the second part of the Spider-Man clone saga that started in well, it started pretty early when you had the Jackal, but it really hit off when you had issue 149 of Amazing Spider-Man. Well, at a certain point when Miles Warren died, his clone that he had left incubating basically aged, accelerated the age and became basically a walking corpse. I don't know the full story. I know that his first issue was just a few issues earlier in this in issue one in excuse me, issue 26. Now, all these books came out in 19, when was it? It was uh, 1979. So at that point, I'm hitting junior high or about junior high. I was not getting as many comics back in a day. It was kind of scattered, the comics I was getting. Wasn't going to the drugstore with my mom quite as much on Saturday mornings. I was getting a little old for that kind of thing. But if I had to do it all over again, I'd be going back every week and trying to pick up as many comics as I could. So I didn't pick these up off the newsstands back in the day, and I only had sporadic, spectacular Spider-Man to begin with. So I picked these up just for fun. I want to read them, and at some point, I'm going to try to pick up issue number 26. That's, the again, the first, or first issue with Carry On. And just a little bit more history about that character. That character eventually died in... a few, I think a few issues later, but that they brought back that character a couple times. They've retconned that story, his origin at certain points. I was reading some of this and I didn't realize some of the stuff that there were different people who were carry on down the line. But it's funny when before I when I picked these up, I was I was trying to remember some of his history before I looked it up, and I was thinking, well, I knew it was a Miles Professor um Miles Warren creation but in my mind i thought it might have been a peter parker clone and when i did the readings like no it was a clone of the professor himself so those are fun mostly just for fun for reading but that didn't stop me this particular week because we had more as you can see we got some spectacular spider-man and what did i say i didn't have a lot of these and here's one that is a key. It's a pretty decent key, too, that I picked up. And it is the issue right before these, issue number 27. And guys, you know what this is. This right here is the first Frank Miller work on Daredevil. So it's been pretty significant. I never had this book. Again, I didn't. I was picking these books up again, like I said, on the newsstand. But it's a book that I have never picked up in all the years. And... It's kind of fun what I'm doing on Infinity Comics right now is because I'm looking at every comic that they're putting out for the week, I'm seeing a lot of little tiny holes in my collection that I've been basically filling. And again, with the prices being so low on a lot of them, I've been that's why I'm picking them up. We got a lot of books today, and that's what I did. It's I mean, some of these I've had, but some of these I've never had, like this one right here. Now, this right here does have some spec values. It is a obviously it's a Frank Miller first Daredevil. They had this listed for a VF minus. I think it's pretty close to being graded in that pretty close to being exact on that. Once I got it here, I took a look at it, and there is there's basically one color breaking spine tech right in here 
but the corners are really sharp. And to be quite honest, I think even that's a VF minus is going to be a little bit undergraded. I think I can push this book, even with that spine tick. And we'll see, because it does have some value. Um, 8.5 is only good for $50. Now, we'll talk about this in a moment. If I think it's going to be an 8.5, I'm not getting graded. Even a 9.0 is only $60. These are recent sales. I mean, very recent sales. 9.2s go up to $78, and I'm going, okay. Once I get it in the press, once I get it out, let's see how it really looks. This is a book, just like a lot of things, have dropped in value. I can't believe, when I was looking this up, when I bought this, and again, I bought this at a pretty reasonable price, it's like, okay, that's pretty good. Let's... I. Without looking it up, see what prices are going for, I figured this would do pretty good no matter what. To be honest, I'm a little a little shocked at some of these prices that I was finding right there. So it may be a book that may just stay in the collection as a roll, and I'll be real happy with that no matter what. So there is that. All right, and then let's move on to... Oh, I tell you what I, I was going to say. I was going to move on to Captain America, but... No, I've got one more Spectacular Spider-Man. This is issue number 90. This came out... When did this come out? It came out right when Spider-Man 252 came out. It was... it was Technically, it is tied for the second appearance of the black costume. Here, let me turn this just a little bit so we can get away from that glare. It is tied for the second appearance of the black costume with Marvel Team Up 141. And... This is a book I had in my collection when I started selling a couple years. I did sell this as a raw and did pretty good on it. I, to be honest, I can't remember what I sold it for, but I did sell it as a raw. And I've always wanted it back in the collection. And this is a pretty decent copy. I pretty much thought it was a little bit better than it was judging on the photos. And that's a thing that I mentioned before is that the photos are not as high quality as I'd like. And But here's the, here's the big key for the whole day. I'm, I'm revealing this a lot earlier than I probably should have. For the prices that these books are going for, for a lot of them, it's worth the money to take a little bit of risk on a book like this, that if it comes out better, and I, I've got an X-Men book I did the same thing on. For the money, it's really good for that role. And to take the chance that it's actually a lot better than you expect, is worth the gamble on some of these. And I did that on this. This one has about, th there's about three spine ticks over here that I don't like. So I probably won't get it graded. But again, this is a book that graded has really dropped as well. And let me give you prices and I'll make a comment about that. 8.5 is only $55, 9.0, 60, 9.2, 70. And it's just the prices have dropped. And books like this, well, I was going to make the point that these were great grading candidates no matter what at a certain point. But today's market, it's not going to be worth getting this graded unless you get those really top grades. Obviously, your 9.8s, but your 9.6s, maybe 9.4s. There's nobody out there wanting to buy this as an 8.5, most likely, or even or something even lower. It's just not worth your time. So this one is going to stay raw in my collection. I may sell it again and try to upgrade the raw at some point. But I still like having it back in my, in my collection, even though it does have this just absolutely wonderful Al Milgram art. And we'll leave it at that. All right, let's move on to Captain America that I was about ready to pick up. This is a childhood favorite. It was part of that run that I started with Captain America in 160, I believe 163. And I continued getting most of these books up until the probably the mid 80s when I think I think Frank Robbins came on and did a little bit of work. And and I think Jack before Jack Kirby came back. And a lot of these were Sal Bushima artwork, which is what's in here. I grew up with Sal Bushima. I have talked nonstop about Sal Bushima's influence on the my life back in those days when he was doing Defenders and Captain America, and eventually he was doing the Hulk and things, and so many books that he seemed like he was on, and this is no exception. I absolutely love this book. It is part of the Secret Empire storyline, part two in this, and in this issue, 
there's a little bit of a side story going on with the Falcon and Black Panther. And one key to this right here is the first time that the Falcon gets these wings. And it's fun to watch this story where he hasn't learned how to actually fly completely yet. And that causes problems. And just really good storytelling. Really good. And I'll be honest... And I think that's the third time I say today. Day. I guess the day's show should be titled, I'll Be Honest. So I love Sal's artwork, but it does, it's serviceable type artwork. It's really good, but it's, it's, it's not his brother. It's not Jack Kirby, but it's really, I still really like it. And it's easy to read his stories. He really excels at sequential art. He's a good solid storyteller. He doesn't have to be dynamic like in storytelling like a Neil Adams does or anything, but it is a really good and it's an easy book to read no matter what. But I always love this. You've got Moonstone in it, the Secret Empire, and you've got Falcon at the at the end. He is going after Captain America to try to get him to turn in, be turn himself back in because it starts with a prison break. And Cap's in prison. He's been charged with murder. And Cap, after Cap breaks out, that's part of the storyline, and then Falcon goes after him, and then Moondragon, who is really a villain, but in the course of the beginning of the story, he is portrayed as a hero. So it's an interesting storyline. I, I absolutely like this. But I picked this up because I, I, I still have this in my PC. I had it probably a decent copy when I replaced it back in the early 90s, too as well as my original. But this was a really nice copy that just popped up, and I kind of took a chance on this. They had it listed for Fine Plus, and I felt like that was way undergraded, and I didn't even bother to put prices on my notes to tell you guys what to look for, because once I started looking at the book, and I'm going, well, there's a couple defects right there. I'm I'm probably not going to... I'm just going to keep this raw in the collection at this point. But that right there is a really, really nice book. If you guys get a chance, pick up Captain America 170 through 175. Great storyline, great ending. And you get, I believe in the, it's not 172, I think it's 173, maybe. It's one of the issues where you actually get the X-Men, the original X-Men come into the storyline. And at this time, we don't have original X-Men. X-Men. We don't have an ongoing X-Men title with original content. We were going through the reprint phase of the X-Men before we got the giant size X-Men and X-Men 94. So if you wanted ongoing, you find out what's going on with the X-Men, this book was probably one of the only books out there that actually had them guest starring for a little bit. And I always thought that was pretty cool. So guys, check out the storyline on these right here. All right, so what's up next is the X-Men book that I picked up that I mentioned a few minutes ago that I was taking a chance on, even though it was listed as a VF. And it is a chancy book, and here it is. It is one of my favorites. It is X-Men, Uncanny X-Men 213. This is part of that Marauder's Mutant Massacre storyline. It's the last issue in that, and you've got obviously Claremont writing still, obviously, but you've got this wonderful, wonderful Wolverine saber tooth cover and interior art by Alan Davis. Now, this book right here is was a project goal of mine last year. Even two years ago, I was trying to get this book right here graded 9.8. It had some really good value, and I had a lot of copies of it. That's one of the reasons I was doing it. But the Funny thing was, every time I go to a show, I try to pick up this book at decent prices. Covers look fantastic. The, you look at the spines, they look really good. But I got into the habit of taking them out of the bag and board at the shows to look at the back. You've got this, I believe it's a D&D &D kit with a very dark illustrated back cover, at least three quarters of the cover. So the spine ends up being having the set up really good to have awful spine ticks, color-breaking spine ticks. And you've got anywhere spine ticks or any of that, and you're not going to get your grade. And it was a project to get that 9.8, and I suffered on that big time. I had some 8.5s and 9.2s, 
9.4s. I had a couple 9.6s, which were really good. And I kept that none. I kept one of those 9.6s in my PC because I just couldn't get that 9.8. Well, early last year, I finally got a copy that I felt really, really was going to hit that 9.8. And I was stoked. And I ended up sending it in to one of the Chris Claremont signings at CGC. And I got my 9.8. And I was like, yes, I, this is great. And what I ended up doing with that was taking it with me to Heroes Con down in Charlotte last year. And Alan Davis was there. And first thing I did was go to the CGC booth. And I had them crack it open. And... I immediately was going to go take it to Alan Davis, but his line was, it was, I've spoken about the problem CGC had in Charlotte last year because they did not have enough witnesses day one. They only had three witnesses that would go around from their booth to take people around. And you had a big line at CGC just waiting for the witnesses to get back. So after they broke the book out and they put it into a window bag and boards for signing and then put it into basically they gave me that that then I could well it already had the Claremont autograph on there so they had to rebag it date it so I then give it back to me and what was going to have to happen was I would have to take it to see or excuse me I'd have to take it to Alan Davis with a CGC witness who would then open the bag itself, give me the book back to give to Alan Davis to get signed for him to rebag it. And it was a long process. And in the end, I kept my 9.8 and I got a beautiful copy with the two signatures on here. It is a very, I mean, it's not a super expensive book, even with the signatures, but it was a goal that made me probably the most happy of just about anything last year. And I picked up some good things last year. Well, I picked this up off of Infinity Comics and I took a chance and it looked really good on the photos as best as I could, could tell. As I said, I was putting the a chance on this at a really decent price. It's a lot less than I would have paid at any show for a book in this condition. It's in fantastic shape, but there is a little bit of a color-breaking spine tick on the back cover. So it will be a candidate that I'll probably just keep raw. I may end up selling it to and just listing it on eBay as a VF Plus. It's really what it is. It's a VF Plus, maybe even a near mint minus type book. But took a chance on that. It didn't come through, but that was part of what this order is, and that's what I do with Infinity Comics, as I was saying earlier. All right, so as we go on here, we're starting to get some bigger keys. This right here is Shogun Warriors number one. I've picked this up a couple times in the last year, I, actually two years, and they're still in the shop. Guys, I picked up so many comics that I have backlogged in my own shop trying to get things bagged and, well, cleaned and pressed, not bagged and boarded, cleaned and pressed. So at some point, this book right here will get in there. They listed this as a VF Plus, Plus, and it is a really nice copy of Shogun Warriors number one. This came out in February 1979. And again, let's see, I'm going to go up real close there. You see that? I know you can see the bag and board, but again, here is another copy with the back cover coming around on the front just a little bit. And as I said, just the way I like it in a case like this when I want to send it in to CGC because that gives me a chance to not have those color-breaking spine ticks. So I got some prices on this right here. 9.8s have dipped down to $143. 9.6 is 86 That leaves me in the spot of clean and press and really take a good look at this. And if it is a 9.8 candidate, it will probably get sent in if it's drops down after that, I may just keep it as a roll, just like I did that X-Men book. It's going to be tough at that point. But it may be a case where I go ahead and get a graded and ho hang on to it as well. I, I mean, I like it in my collection, but these are kind of books that I, I like to have for a while and then I don't mind parting with. And I don't mind taking some of these books. And as I, as I said, I've also got multiple copies now. And you can always keep one and sell one, that kind of thing. I haven't mentioned it, but that's part of this. I don't just sell just to make money. I sell to help pay for the hobby, just like a lot of us. So we'll see where that goes on that. 
All right, next book. Never had this, but I did have some in the line, and it is this is Warlock number 15. I think this was the last issue. I think it, it, it finished after this. And this right here is, I think what it was is, when I started Adam Warlock in Strange Tales, at the very end of Strange Tales, I think they had kept the numbering a little bit, and then they switched it. I, I don't know. There was some switch over, I think, with issue nine. Or maybe it was Marvel Premiere. Maybe that's... I can't remember now. Can't remember what exactly happened. Regardless, Warlock title right here. Jim Starlin still doing his cosmic storyline with that. You actually have a nice little significance with Gamora here. This is her first cover appearance, actually. So that was kind of cool. The other key to this, there's a couple actually, but the other big key to this is that the soul gem that he is in possession of is revealed to be part of a six gem collection. I don't think, at this point, we're not mentioning infinity gems at this point, but you know that that is eventually what that is part of is the infinity gauntlet and the stones, all the different infinity stones. So that is kind of a key that's probably, it's probably heated up really good back in 2019, back during the Avengers Infinity War and things like that. But this right here, I felt, felt like I got it at a really good price. And that's something I haven't mentioned today. And there's only one book I'm going to mention prices on today because I want you guys to do your own homework and determine if the prices are what you're wanting to pay because I can't tell you what to pay on books. You've got to be comfortable with what you're paying, your, paying yourself. And you got to do your own research. I can't, I'm not going to sit here in this channel and tell you you should buy this or buy that. That's my disclaimer for this. It, so I don't go over those prices. What I do like to do is give you the prices what on some of these books that have potential. And I'm telling you, I didn't pay a lot for this, but I they had this listed as a VF, and it is a really nice copy. And this one, I actually was shocked at at some of the prices. Now, I don't think it's 9.8 Canada, but I went in and put that price down. It's up to $372. But a 9.6 is still sitting at $150. Again, these are recent sales. Even a 9.4 is around that $100 to $90 mark. So this is a book right here that may be pushed a little bit in front of some of the others because of how good the condition is. And because I didn't spend a lot of money on this, there's definitely going to be some room. If I sell it, there will definitely be some margin on that that is really good. But that was kind of, that's kind of my take on that right there. Let's go on to the next book while we're at it. Never had this book, but I did have several in the line. It is Spidey Super Stories. Now, this was the, they put this out in 19, when was this? 1974, which is a little bit earlier than I expected. I had some of these books in this line. This is the first issue, and they had this listed as a VF minus. It came out in October of 74. I had just turned seven years old here when this came out in October of 74, and I didn't have this. Again, I've had some of these in the line, but this popped up. Again, I'm looking at every listing to see what they have, and I'm going, there are certain books in there I think are just kind of cool to have in your collection, whether you get them graded or not. It's kind of cool to have this, and the prices are really good. This right here, I did put some prices for you. As I said, this was a VF minus what they listed it. It's actually in really decent shape. Let's take a closer look right here. Again, you've got a little bit of that spine coming around the back, but I'm not going to show it to you there because it's it's actually yellow in the back too. So there's a chance for some color breaking on that, but it's. It's a really nice shape. There's a little dog ear down here that I don't like. It's really micro. I don't like that at all. And I think I saw it anyway, and it had it listed as a v, 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 VF minus. And so I put some prices of that when I looked it up, and I put that around that 8.5 at $61, 9.2, excuse me, 9.0, 125, 9.2, 130. And I'm going, okay, that's actually another candidate to go ahead and get graded at a certain point. Not a lot of room in here. It's not that valuable, but I think it's cool to have it in your collection. So let's put these books down and we'll get down for the final books right here. These are actually some pretty decent. Uh, this right here is not a key, but it is part of that Invaders 
run that I'm trying to put together. I finally picked up issue number nine. This right here is the first third appearance of Union Jack. But I guess I think it's probably the second appearance of Baron Blood as well. I'm not sure. That's an issue. I think issue five or six. I can't remember exactly when he made his first appearance. That's a book I still need. But this one's really good. It's a fine, very fine. And as you know, I'm trying to pick up a really high-grade run of the entire Invaders run. And normally a fine book by itself is not going to be that what I want exactly because it's going to have some spine ticks in it. Well, this one right here, as I said, was a fine, very fine. Again, here, let's go right back up there. Now you see some of the I hope you can, guys can see that back cover coming around just a little bit here. It has some surprising value. I think it's much better than a fine, very fine book. I think it's got 9.6 potential. And 9.6s go for $283. 9.4s drop down to 75 And I'm not getting the Invaders run graded. I may eventually get the... the Issue number one graded and the king size annual with the Alex Schomburg cover graded, but I don't think any of the others I'm going to do that. But interesting that this as a 9.6 actually sold recently for $283. That's pretty significant. I'd be curious to see what 9.8 would do on that. Not a 9.8 candidate, but it's going to be very close. All right. Next up. All right. Not a key. But this right here is a huge key. It is Astonishing Tales, number 25. You've got the first appearance of Deathlock the Demolisher and the first published artwork by George Perez on the last two pages. What a great key. This is a book that I had in my collection for a long time. When I started getting my books graded, I was going to pull that book out and get it graded, but it was a little bit rougher, rougher than I wanted. So I picked up a copy of this book a couple years ago at the National Sports Collectors Convention in Chicago, Illinois. And there was a comic dealer there. I've spoken about that, the comics I picked up from there. In fact, from the same dealer, I picked up a X-Men 95 for a really good price that I ended up getting a 9.8 on that book. And that has been fantastic. I can't believe it. it was one of my best clean and press jobs because the book was in really great shape. But for what I paid, it was not a 9.8 Canada. That was price. Should have been much more than that. But he had a copy of this right here. And I I will tell you that I paid twice as much for that book than I did to this one. And I think this book right here is in a really good shape. It has got some potential. Yeah, it is a super clean. There's a little bit of wear on the spine. Very, very little. I mean, I've got bad light here, so it's... Really nice copy. He had it listed. They had it listed as a fine plus. I think it's much better than that. And let me give you some prices because I'm telling you, I've got a ton of margin in this book to get cleaned and pressed and graded. 8.5s recently, $175. 9.0, $275. That's what I'm thinking right now without really taking a closer look at this book. That's where I'm imagining this book to be at. And that is a lot of money for those books at those grades, I think this book may even be better than those grades right there. So I'm excited to get this one into the shop sooner than the other ones. All right, continuing with the big keys right here. One of my favorite books. I continue talking about this book. It is on my, well, it's already off, but I always look for better grades. It is part of that goals list that I have set for myself on certain things to continue working on. Let's show you the book. It's Captain America, excuse me, Captain Marvel 26. This right here is the first in the storyline that Jim Starlin did with Captain Marvel taking on Thanos, the Thanos War, I think they called it. And right here, the significance of this issue right here is you've got the first appearance of Thanos on a cover. And it's small, where is he? Right up here. But he is on the cover. And it is the first story in the storyline. I love this. I grew up on this book right here. And absolutely one of my favorite stories, um, some of my favorite covers I've gotten. And I mentioned the goal 
with this book, it wasn't just this book. My goal was to get the entire Thanos storyline from issues 26 through 33. Yeah, 33. All graded. I'd like to have them all above. 9.4 would be my what I really would like at the minimum. But on some of them, I've got a little bit lower on that. So I'll look for replacements at some point. But this book I've got, I think I've got this already as a 9.4. I know I sold a 9.0 recently. So this is a book right here that Jim Starlin shows back up at one of the big conventions that I go to, whether it's Heroes Con or Baltimore Comic Con. I may eventually, I may take this one to actually get signed. I did get signed issue number 29. It has that great cosmic Captain Marvel on the cover flying through space. I had Jim Starlin sign that. But when I bought this book, I realized this is the book that I really should have Jim Starlin sign. Because to me, this right here started everything for me for all the Jim Starlin storylines. All the way from this, all the way through... Death of Captain Marvel to the Infinity Gauntlet and things like that. So, yeah, this might be one of those where I'll clean and press it and hopefully he'll show up in one of those two conventions and I'll have it ready to go with me and I will have it CGC'd at that point. So, stay tuned on that right there. All right, so we're down to the final three books in this Infinity Comics auction that I picked up all during this particular week. And it's another book that I did not have in my PC although I had issues after this. And it's just one of those books that I probably should have picked up many years ago before before we had the MCU and we had movies or anything like this. It's a book that should have just been picked up, but new things come out all the time, and I don't think about going back all the time. But I did pick, finally pick this up. It is Doctor Strange number one. This right here was, I guess it's the first in the second series of his own title. Got this wonderful Frank Bruner artwork. And I really liked his artwork back in the day. It, it was there was a little bit of Jim Starlin with that. I I think there was some of the stuff was very similar. Also, this is the first appearance of Agamo, Agamotto. Did I say that right? I'm not sure. They had this listed as a fine, very fine, and I think it's probably a pretty accurate grade. It looks in pretty decent shape. The one thing that concerned me on the photos was some little spots down here at the bottom. And I don't know if you're going to be able to pick it up. But over on the... Right over here, you see some white spots right there. And it looked to me like they were dings. Or where it had bumped against it or something like that. But I think it's actually part of the artwork. So I think this is a pretty nice book. This is a book that's got some value as well. Again, they listed it as a fine, very fine. It's got some got some potential for this book right here. As a, even a 9.0 recently, $180. 8.5 even, $169. Get this up to a 9.2 and it gets up pretty good, $288. This is a book right now that I'm glad I have it in the PC, but I will clean and press this right here and we'll see what the value in the market. And I will sell that at a decent price when that's available, I guess. When I get to that point, we'll see if the price is good, I will definitely sell it. But for now, again, I'm glad to have it in the PC. All right, down to the final two books. And this right here is a book I wanted to replace it because I had great impress, great, excuse me, clean and pressed and then got it graded. And I was really disappointed with the grade. It was a prook out of my PC. I had the original back in the day, back in 1977. But in the early 90s, when I first started working out of college, I moved to Baltimore, was going to Jeppy's Comics, and I was picking up a lot of 70s titles that I didn't have. Master of Kung Fu, Tomb of Dracula... And this was one of those titles that I picked up a really nice copy of that. And I had it in my collection for years. And when I first started cleaning and pressing and getting books graded, I sent this book in and it got a 9.0. And I was going, really? This is a 9.0. And I ended up selling it. So I hadn't had it in my PC for probably a couple years now. But I finally replaced it with a really good copy even though it's listed as a fine copy, this is Miss Marvel number one, beautiful John Romita Sr. cover, 
beautiful John Buscema art on the interior. And this, of course, is the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Miss Marvel. And gotta love the costume design right here that changed not that long after. I think they added a little bit more material. Can't show, show a belly button. God forbid. Can't show a belly button. But this right here is a book that I will tell you this. I'm glad I sold my 9.0 when I did because right now the most recent 9.0 went for $100 and that was a best offer. So you know it wasn't quite $100. 8.5 all the way down to $50. Now, a 9.2... A 9.2 went for $100. A 9.4 went for $160. Uh, it's one of those you've got to get it into a 9.6 and obviously a 9.8. And you're just seeing a lot of those people in this economy are not putting the money towards the lower grades when the upper grades have dropped so much. So... It's not going to be worth your time to get this graded unless you can get that 9.6 at the very least. Let's take a quick look at it. It looked really good on, on there, on the site, on the photos that I could do it. And I was comfortable taking a chance with it, even though it wouldn't, if it, even if it doesn't get that 9.6 in the upper nines, just to get a really good copy back in my PC, even if it stays raw like this. Now, I'm looking at this, and it does have, I'm looking at one, there's a, yeah, there's a little collar break right there, little right there, but it is still a really near mint minus, very fine plus type comic right here they have in the PC. I'm really glad to have that there. I enjoyed all of these female comics that they had in the late mid late 70s you've got an early 80s too you've had spider woman you had miss marvel and you had she hawk and i i enjoyed all of those and what was nice about uh, two of them is you've got john bishima artwork which is always fantastic all right so we are down to the last book and this right here i saved it for the end and again i said i wasn't going to mention prices on all of these here but i was going to mention this one because this one right here exemplifies why I go to Infinity Comics and I keep going back because you can find great books at really great prices. Some things slip through the cracks and I think this one slipped through the cracks big time and I'm going to set everything down so it has room for itself. It is a big key. Detective Comics 395. It is the first work by Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill together on Batman. And what a great comic. I spotlighted a reprint Millennium Comics edition of this here in an episode a while back when I was talking about some of the signed comics that I had at that I had had Neil Adams, Denny O'Neill, and Julia Swartz sign that copy. And the reason I did is because I never owned this. And just this last half a year... I finally opened the door with Neil Adams, Denny O'Neill type Batman books. And this, I've got a couple so far, but this one right here really shocked me for what I paid for this. Now, they had this listed as a fine book, and I'm looking at it, and there is a very tiny dog ear down there, sharp corner up here with the black cover. But you start going down the spine, and it's got, it's got a few little color-breaking spine texts. But this cover is fantastic the rest of the cover everything looks really good at this i think this is in a fine plus very fine minus type grade i think you could i think you could grade this out to an 8.5 maybe a 7 8 7.5 to an 8 at minimum but let's talk about that now i again i don't think i mentioned the price what is the price let me i wrote it down I paid $26.77 minus tax for this book right here. I mean, that to me is a steal. And if I can get this thing graded out to, if I can get this graded out to an 8.5, most recently, that sold for $400. That would be a fantastic return on investment. Now, I didn't do all the prices. I probably should have done an 8.0. I, I wrote them down, but a 7.5 drops all the way down to 100. So that tells me 
I've got to get it to at least an 8.0, but probably an 8.5 to really, if I want to sell this to make any really significant money out of it. But a 6.0 even went for $90. So once you take the cost of what I paid for this, plus grading fees and shipping and everything, 6.0, I would probably make a whole 10 bucks maybe. Uh, minus fees, I probably would break even. So it definitely have to be grayed out much better than that. But for $26.77, I don't mind taking a chance on a book like this right here. This is really nice. But that's it, guys. That is everything I picked up from this particular week at Infinity Comics Auctions on hipcomic.com. Again, you can find the link to that website down below in the description so you guys can check them out yourselves. Again, you can check. I didn't give you prices, but do your own homework. Go find out if that's a book you want to put that kind of, whatever kind of money you want to put into something, be comfortable with what you put into it. I'm not telling you to go out and buy these books, but definitely go out there and find bargains. And that's what I felt like I did on the majority of the stuff today. These were, everything on here I felt like was a bargain. Some of them were bigger bargains like this, and the other ones were maybe a little bit less of a bargain. But nonetheless, they're all great keys to have in your PC. So definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think about the books today and if these are books that you have in your PC. And if you're ever interested in anything on my channel, whether they're raw like today or graded books, definitely reach out to me at collectorauctions at yahoo.com or DM me on my Instagram account. You can also currently see what I have for sale right now in my eBay store or on my short box page by checking out those links in the description as well. So guys, that is it. I've had a lot of fun today showing off these books. Hopefully you guys will check out Infinity Comics Auctions and hipcomic.com. Hope to see you there. But better yet, I hope to see you back here for the next episode. So until then, remember, every comic has a story. <laughs> <laughs>